welcome to the hood where everything is grind. And at my bud spot is where you can find me. Dreaming on elements, foes and trades, loads and braids, spokes and braids. We got moves and doubles, needs and wants. Niggas set tripping, beef and punk. Infrared beams on all our enemies. Never graduated, but money is saturated in the hood. Never graduated, but money is saturated in the hood. We're still at war here in the streets. The difference between then and now is I think we're just more or less at war with poverty, the system, and just everyday life. Niggas hitting corners so hard, they losing knockoffs. My money keeps the cops off. I'm young soprano with guns in my mouth. We don't give a fuck about what all these other motherfuckers think about the way we live. Fuck them. You don't know. You're not here. You don't know the pain a motherfucker go through. Back surviving. It's going down, man. Motherfuckers is killing motherfuckers for real, losing their lives, man. I mean, seeing is believing. All you gotta do is be here. Motherfuckers still dying every day. I don't even believe that's gonna ever change. Trapped in the hood, creeping on niggas who slip. Eclipse, apocalypse, two max, six flips. Nickel deep in the Esco. I would die for the hood, but I'm gonna die trying to put something better in the better, hood. Yeah. So if I get killed because I'm trying to make this community better, then that's what I'll die for. Back in the motherfucking hood. Well, he used to be the most feared man in Little Rock. He survived the streets by leading a gang. Now what's he doing? Prison is where LaFell Jackson ended up here in Forest City, Arkansas. I paid my price. I did my time. I came home. You remember me? You just called me OG back then. The OG, I know me. you. I remember yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. They just show me how things go. Things change. Can I get a hold of All right, let's go. I think that it's a lot easier doing time than it is out here struggling to make ends meet. I'm gonna have to make an example. And my example is that you can come home, regardless of how long you're gone, and make it. I had a nightclub, I had party houses. When I go to the club, I go to the club four nights out of a week. When we go, we going 30 deep. I'm at the top of my game. Nobody tell me to do nothing. When I make the shot call, it stopped right there. How long was you in the game? I started really banging about 88 when I came back from California. I went and stayed in California, and I was kind of took in by the gangs there. I seen these dudes walk up to each other, and he grabbed this dude and he said, what's up, cuz? And he hugged him and he squeezed him. Man, I had never seen that. Because my daddy told me you don't squeeze no another man. <laughs> right then I said, I want that, what they have. Got some guys riding through that's from the other side. They may not be hostile, they may be hostile. So we take cover and, and get prepared. Killing then was the top notch. If you wore blue, you were an enemy to the bloods. If you wore red, you were an enemy to the Crips. This was war. I mean, if every gun gang came through, we would buy it. It was like, it was war from the youngest Crip to the oldest was strapped down. Dealing with killers on the wrong side of the street. On the wrong side of the street, bro. I play for keeps. I take it deep. Make them think twice. Fucking with me. You on the wrong side of the street, bro. I play for keeps. I 
Take it deep, make them think twice. Fucking with me, on the wrong side of the street, bro. I play for peeps. I take it deep, make them think twice. Fucking with me. Since I've been out, regardless of what I accomplish, I'm still looked at as a gang member and a convicted drug dealer. I'm gonna always be tied to the gang members. I'm gonna always be tied to the hood. In order to make a change in the community, those are the people that you need to talk to. If I go back to prison for that, so it be. I'm the gang intelligence detective with the Little Rock Police Department. Yeah, we got the word that LaFell has moved back down here. With what I know about him, it's hard to really say that he's trying to do better if he does not drag some people out of it with him. You know, if he loves some of these people in this neighborhood down here as much as he says, drag them out of the lifestyle, drag them out kicking and screaming. The city of Little Rock, with all their resources, can't get the kids off the block. How in the hell do they expect LaFell who is barely making from week to week to get to get the kids out the block and give them something in place of the drugs. Oh, oh, you got to give them something in place of what they're doing. Give me a badge, give me a job. Hell, I could probably ride down and arrest more people than any cop then. But to really come out from your job where well, you ain't making no money and do some things right there in that neighborhood, you can go out on shit now, oh, I see you all. Oh, we got our little rock officers. We kicking ball with the kids. We do. We play ball with the fucking kids. Well, come over in the neighborhood and play ball with those kids. It has taken us 10 years to get up to the point where we are right now, where we have a good handle on who is who, what's going on, what neighborhood is fighting this neighborhood. It's always bubbling up underneath the surface. You talk to them and they'll say, look, there's nothing else out here but to sell dope and gangbang. No opportunities, nothing to do. Nobody's gonna give me a job. And they feel like that they're at the bottom of the ladder. Well, the police feel the same way. parents get into drugs for whatever reason, and the kids are the ones that suffer. These kids, they don't have a choice. You know, they are stuck with who they're stuck with. You know, if we don't get a handle on it, it's just over and over. Like that, I put this stuff on it. It's been hard. But if I wasn't really grounded in my family, I would be back in the game. Coming from being a person who was able to always go and buy what he wanted, have to ask people for nothing. I would make more in a day than my bosses now making a year. And I wasted it. Come do something for me. 
I want you to come look up the word nigga for me in the dictionary, because I need to know what to say. OK, here we go. A gift slang, slang used as a disparaging, disparaging term for a black person. OK, so when you call him that and, and say, I'm finna hit the ball, nigga, did you know that you was talking real bad about him and about yourself also, being a black child? Huh? No. Well, now you know, so I don't want to hear you saying that again. One day we was killing on the street called 23rd. We all grew up together. We all crips, right? When the mama and crips, ain't nobody getting out. Ain't nobody getting out. Ain't nobody get out. Once you in, once you in, the only way you getting out is if you die. Out. How did you feel when you took down other gang members and stuff like that? Did it? Did you feel good or something like that? But and, and, and I guess you're saying, how did I feel when I shot somebody? Yeah. At that time, it was like smoking crack. And I guess you can ask anyone that's done that to, to be able to pull the trigger, it's a rush. But they don't tell you about this part. Later on, when you're laying in, 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 your, in your cell and you're having hot flashes, when you can't sleep and you wake up and you think this certain person that you see, when you see in his eyes when you shot him, you think he's standing there over you. And I'm thinking, man, this dude here had a, a daughter. This dude here had a mother too. You see what I'm saying? I've seen the ones who talk about they got the black hearts. Sit in the cell and put their heads down and cry. You know, let's just go back and just kind of tell me what you think about the road that you didn't travel. A lot of things I done, they, they weren't even reasonable, really. With no reason to do them. You know, no reason at all. I thought it was going to lead me to somewhere. Right. You know what I'm saying? I had too much wealth and fame on my mind. And messing with the guys that I messed with, I thought they were going to lead me to my wealth. And it just seemed like a glamorous life. So I really hate it had to end up like this. I hate it too, honestly. Hospital. Could bust me back. Can't get no help, really. That I can't walk. Everybody that was close to you back then, they treat you different now, don't they? Yeah. Hmm. How they thought you, you thought they were close to you. <clears throat> How they treat you now, man? Cause I don't know I ain't got no homies or no friends. People ride down the street and yell, Baby Blue! You ain't call me no Baby Blue, man. You ain't like that name no more. Well, I don't want to hold you long, homie. I know that you're tired, man. You know, my, my thing, I would really like to know what you would tell me if I was 15 years old and thinking that, the, that you just said the glamour. And you said that's what your that's what the homie was showing you the glamour you wanted. What would you tell me if I was 15 and I think that I was looking for the glamour? What would you tell me? You know, I visit Blue today, man. You know, it's sad, and I just can't help to think that, you know, man, you know, that could have been me. That could have been you. You know, will there come a time soon where you may think that, hey, maybe I need to back up because I don't think I really want to be with, be like that? Or do you think that, hey, my destiny is wherever it takes me? That's right. Whatever around this corner, we got to deal with it however we can. It ain't yeah. enough for sure. Only thing that's for sure is that both of us are gonna die. One day. But I do think that sometimes we have a say so on how we die by the situations that we put ourselves in. Marin is like my son. 
because I love him and, and I know if I was able to offer him a way to really raise his family without having to go on the streets, I really think I could help him, but I don't have that to offer him. And I remember when you was the little young kid, could nobody tell you nothing but me. You listen to me for at least five seconds. Yeah, back that long. <laughs> yeah. Then it was on again. Look at him. This kid, he used to be outstanding. I just I used to go pick this kid up all the time, man. Since I was nine, this has been my family. My homeboys and shit been my family. Took care of me. When I ain't know shit about shit, motherfuckers clothes and feed me. Come on, dude. You can let me in on whatever you want. Nah, I just got the weed. Come on. Shit ain't smelling right. Nice to hear that shit every time. I wonder what the fuck going on down there, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to see. And when I got there, hell, I liked it. Yeah, I take him home. Come on, I'm taking you home. All right, OG. By the time I drop him off and I make it back to the hood, he was standing on the corner. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> it was just exciting. It was what you see in the movies all the time. Dodging bullets. Dodging bullets. The money. The money. All this shit. The you know guns. What I'm the girls. And we used to all be in one house, 30 of us. And we got 70 goddamn guns. The house got 2,000 bullets in it. You know, they're like when you outside shooting dice around there. I'm talking, that was every day. Am I ever gonna leave? Hell no. Nah. I ain't got nowhere to go. I'm gonna be here till I die. I'm gonna die on this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Probably motherfucker probably gonna kill me here. Or I'm probably gonna roll down this motherfucker in the wheelchair, goddamn me, and have a heart attack right here. On this motherfucking street right here. We got the whole mother over here. What up, girl? See, this the old spot right here. Motherfuckers came around the corner right there, you know what I'm saying? Did a drive-by and shit. This is where I came down the hill at. See what I mean? All the ones who gave us that. All you had to do was set. Did she get that? That was a, dri that was a drive -by. You see what happened, don't you? That you see what happened? We can't never stand out here without that. Do you guys have any idea who did that? Now, I mean, it's 10 years later. There's a lot of water under the bridge, you know. <laughs> well, OK, I was there. And I was there when the dude raised up to shoot. And uh, it was a blood kid, and he was trying to shoot me when he was coming up out of that car. And now I can say, yeah, when he raised up to shoot, I unloaded on him. And that, you know, that's what happened. What was happening back in the 90s was we was establishing territory. That's done now. Blood has been spilt to call this here the OGC territory. Yep. Blood has been spilt for Monroe and, and all of these other, other, other cities, for 23rd, Wolf Street, blood been spilled. But back in those days, a lot of us who was there, we was the blood spillers. Hey, man. man, how you doing? Hey, what's up, what's up? Oh, man, y'all give all these to Miss Jenny. She gonna make a I'm copy for you guys, right. OK? What's going on? Let's see, man. Look, I like this. See, that went from a B to an A. That's what I'm talking about. OK, now go get a seat. Man, I like what you got going on here, man. Yeah, man. It's man, good, it's, man. Let me see, I, I man. Do my thing, man. You know, and, that, and that's, that's amazing that, that here we are. And sitting down talking to each other, and That's no right. lawson is in my heart. You That's know, right. guns your, in your I heart. I have none. And we, none. you know, we come Please from a time it. where we couldn't, you know, it was a sin just to even walk together. Yeah, yeah. You know? That's right. And, um, That's right. And I said this other night, our block's gonna stay the same. If a person think they come out and change that block, they crazy. Yeah. But it's the people that change. That's right. <laughs> That's Look, why ten man. years, ten years, later, ten years man. man. 
Yeah. How do you make money and how much money do you make? Mm, you know, the way everybody else do. Dope. He was able to get money when, you know, motherfuckers were working jobs and shit. You know, motherfuckers were making more than their parents and shit, man. You know what I'm saying? That shit was cool. You know, back in our days growing up, man, we always felt like, you know, guest jeans and, you know, feelers and shit like that. You know, we thought only the white kids could afford that shit. You know, we were like, man, that's kind of out of our range, you know. But dope changed all that shit. Changed all that shit right there. You know, it brought a whole new life to the hood. Like a, a fresh breath of air. Today we have a guest speaker that's going to talk to you guys about his life experience on the streets. Ten years ago, me and this guy were basically enemies. We couldn't walk within sight of each other without probably wanting to do something to each other. Boy, bro. Appreciate you coming What's up, up, man. Saw gravy, baby. Y'all giving y'all attention. Gravy. What's up, cats? What it do? What it do? Now, I came up in the hardest project in Arkansas. You didn't have nothing but killers, dope fiends, just whatever. You know, anything went. So I went out, throw my little colors on, throw in my gang signs. First thing we had to do was establish ourselves as who we are and show everybody that they're going to respect us. Then you got them mad at you, you know, and your homeboys. And then you got these cats want to come back. And then that's when the gunplay gets started. And believe me, I'm going to tell you something. Bullets are very hot. You see this right here? Let me show you something. See that? See all them dots and stuff right there? You can feel lead still in my arm from when I got shot with a 12-gauge shotgun. Then I caught another bullet in my leg, went through this, went in this leg, out this one, and into this one, and the bullet's still in this leg to this day. You don't want to live what I had to go through. Consider your actions and what you do. Don't go out there and just try to play follow the leader. Be your own person. Don't get led off into gang life. I'm serious. Can I see? See, you can, you can feel them. Grow up right there. You can feel the pellets right there. And they ain't never coming out. Never. <laughs> and it was good because I can let out a lot of anger and frustration in there. You know, and I ain't got to worry about no hassle. I used to always walk with my shirt off, and my hair was, used to be just buck wild, so they like, man, his name is Sonny Boy. First, they used to call me Skinny Man. I was like, hell no, nah, I can't go with that one. <laughs> so I got the name Sonny Boy. This is one of the guns right here that I took from the Crips. This is a 22 automatic. But uh, if it come down to trouble with me, then, you know, I have to throw the clip in and go and do what I got to do. Back in them times, 10 years ago, shit had got out of hand, you know. And it started, we, you know, coming along with guns and all this and that. And then there was the dope game and all that. You know, the money was good coming, shit, six or $700 every couple of hours or whatever. And shit, it's just everything else that came in with it. And it just ended up too deep out of hand. You know, today, I don't bang like I used to back then, but if some trouble come at me, I handle my business. Whether I have to fight you or I have to go get a gun from somebody or something or do what I have to do. I mean, this is my life. I love me. It ain't nothing I wouldn't do for me. Nah, play my jam, man. Yeah, you know my song. Oh, shit. Another day cruising the rock. Now, I'm gonna shoot this shit off the head for you, motherfucker. Okay, if y'all feel this here, off the dome. Not writing it, off the head. Watch this here. Now, you know what? 
I get down up in this thing. I play sick games. Don't give a fuck, I can freestyle on some Rick James. I sit back, I got the shooting aim like a gun. Don't give a fuck, you on the run, I'm just having fun. I'm too cool with this shit. Give me the damn liquor. And watch me act foolish on the damn nigga. Get the money, yo. What the fuck you think is funny, ho? Motherfucker, I'm in the country home. In the southern hills. Sit back, guard your grill. Motherfucker, little rock, ain't state niggas real. We don't play no goddamn games, that's for sure, bro. You better sit back and stack up all your dough. I come through like exhibit, but not from the West Coast. Motherfucker, we down here, we the best, ho. Y'all better understand this shit that we spit. You motherfuckers can play games, motherfuckers, good riddance. Oh, out top, baby. How you hoes love that? Out top, A State represents, baby. Out top for Sheezy. Man, I'm still working on my music shit. Well, let me go if I happen to ever blow up with that shit, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take a whole block and I'm gonna flatline all the houses on it and I'm gonna build my big ass mansion right there on that block, on one of these blocks. Oh, it's gonna be gated and shit, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I gotta have that type of shit. Motherfuckers say, you know, I think I'm getting sedity and shit like that, but fuck you, you ain't finna come take my shit. Yeah, I'm having gates and walls and cameras and oversized rock wallers eating steak and all type of shit for your ass. Yeah, but I think if I do happen to make it in this music shit, I'll stay right here, man. very naive about it. We just thought we would, you know, life would go back to normal. We'd have this baby and, you know, we'd be happy. Uh, it's not like that. Come on. I've been at one of the strongest crossroads since I've been out. Uh, yeah. To feed my family, to take care of my daughter, I can't say what I wouldn't do. And if she can't eat, because of, I'm up on parole, and even with the programs that I'm doing, I'm, I'm juvenile justice work of the year, getting awards from the lieutenant governor and the, the judges, I'm still not accepted in the system. I can't get insurance. I haven't had a checkup since I've been out of prison. And of course, it is definitely, for me, a concern because I wonder how am I going to take care of everything? And I struggle day by day, working two and three jobs, doing odds and ends. I don't down the people who can't, can't take it and go back to selling drugs. I don't down them because I understand how hard it is out here today. I'm one who understands. On the phone, like, look at that. Crippin' ain't easy, but it's fun. Shit, I thrive on this shit every day. You ain't in no trouble. You ain't doing shit wrong, cuz. You in the hood. Like every other motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? Every other motherfucker from the goddamn me ghetto, we in the motherfucking hood. Constant hustle, man. I'm a hustler. Robbing, jacking, stealing, selling dope, playing hoes, everything. Whatever I got to do to eat, make sure my kids got them in height. Shit, that's what I'm gonna do. Just like the king of the jungle, man, the lion got to survive. And so I'm gonna survive by doing whatever it takes. Now, every motherfucker act like that, you know what I'm saying? It's a motherfucking problem or something, cuz. Yeah, you get a job. But for a motherfucker in my shoes, the back of the application, it's gonna be a piece of paper to say, uh, have you ever been convicted of a felony? If so, explain. Shit, and when you do that there, Motherfuckers ain't gonna fuck with you. It ain't just like easy to get no job around this motherfucker. People say it is, but it ain't. And that's why we do what we do. So you think I take a chance on getting 40 years? Every day I do something that can get me 40, 50 years in the penitentiary. Every single day. This don't thing's gonna save me. Ain't nobody on the block gonna save me. My mama ain't gonna save me. Nobody can't save me but me. When it's going down, it's going down. I'd rather be caught with than without me. Shit, motherfucker right here live day for day, minute for minute. You know what I'm saying? For the motherfuckers' sake. My homeboy died in this style right here, man. A nigga smoked my homeboy in this style right here, you know what I'm saying? 
Right here at Crip 6, killed it. Right here in America is worse than what's going on in Afghanistan and over there, overseas. You got, you got this motherfucker up here in the corporate office stealing money. But they worried about what's going on way over there. They saying this man doing this. It ain't about what this man doing. It's about money. For sure. All, the money make the world go run. Money is the evil of the world. Without what? money, the money, the world wouldn't even turn. It would turn. That's it. That's it. Hey, hey, once Bush get this war full of fledged, our economy gonna go down. I don't blame with someone, you know what I'm saying? If he came in my yard, I'd kill his ass, you know what I'm saying? But long as he don't come on the fuck block, I ain't fucked up about what he do, you know what I'm saying? Cause she, it's the motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? He trying to hustle and survive too, you know what I'm saying? He trying to look out for his people. Just like I'm trying to look out for the fuck block, you know what I'm saying? Shit, if I had to blow a motherfucker and knock a motherfucker's ass off to make them realize, goddamn, what the fuck I'm trying to get across, my point across, shit, then that's what I do. You listen to the national news and you hear about drive-by shootings in Baghdad, doing building searches, kicking in doors, and you could almost change the setting around just a little bit and it would be the stuff that we do here on a daily basis. There's nothing else there for them. Only thing they can do to ease the pain of what they see is smoke the churn. Smoke, snort the cocaine, do the ecstasy. So how can we condemn them when we don't put nothing else there for them? Who's that? <laughs> Eva. Eva, represent the I'm Eva. from Sweet Home in Little Rock, representing the Rock Town, baby. What's your click, girl? <laughs> Eastside, good grief. Talking about salt, nigga, hold your breath and feel this real shit. Motherfucker slime, nigga, wanna ride through the hood with the gat and things. Throwing them signs, talking about he banging and things. Motherfucker don't know I pull out this motherfucker gat, nigga, and put two in his chest and say, Crip did that. You know what I'm talking about, cuz, when you spit on this mic? Make sure it's real, nigga, I'll crib all day and night. That would be so brothers. That's how we kick it in the sweet home. Sweet home is where we from. Give me close up, baby. Work with me, baby. How y'all doing tonight? Back in the days, we used to crip. Today's all you niggas, y'all just flip. Y'all, <laughs> <laughs> y'all wait for that shit, boy. <laughs> neighborhood these gang members are terrorists terrorism affects the way you do things it makes you scared to go do this you want to stay home because of fears of violence that's what these guys are they're terrorists I guess you guys just had an opportunity to meet the jump out boys basically uh, street narcotics break your legs break your legs Thing is, we should be able to still walk in our community, just like everybody else is able to walk in their community, especially if we're not doing nothing wrong. I'm not selling no dope. I'm not doing nothing wrong. So I should be able to walk out here, too. It's their job to arrest people that's selling dope and whatever else. But it's not their job to harass the people of this community. And we're not going to stand for it. All the police can die for all I care. Dirty motherfuckers, 
all of them. I ain't got them. I don't feel shit for them. You know what? To be honest, I wish the shoe was on the other foot, and it was them motherfuckers falling instead of my own boys. That's how I feel, really. I mean, deep down, I don't like them motherfuckers. I don't like nothing about the judicial system, the justice system, period. I don't like judges. I don't like prosecutors. I don't like lawyers. Man, I don't like nothing to do with the institution, period. What do you do now to make a living? Man, I'm a gigolo. I slang dick, man. I fuck for money, hell yeah, for real. You think I'm playing? You laughing? I ain't playing. It's not necessarily. I just tell them, look, I'm Deuce Bigelow, the male gigolo. Would you mind paying me for some dick? No, you gotta be slick with the shit. If you wanna look nice, it's good to have your cardboard and your razor blade creases. You know, when you tap them and they sound like, like this. That's a cardboard crease. I mean, I do like to look nice because a player's conversation is only good as his appearance, you know what I'm saying? And I know I can snatch a broad, no problem. But it's just something about you can just post up in your stance and everything when you dressed right, when you know you're dressed right, and that's when the broad eyeball is just going from head to toe. And she gonna look at how you dress, she gonna be like, oh yeah, this nigga here, all right. So, bam, you in. Ooh, the whole one. This is my baby, Veronica Williams. We engaged, she in the service, you know what I'm saying? And you know, eventually with time, man, when you, when you spend time with a woman, you start to develop some kind of feeling for them, right? So I proposed to her. She accepted. And I love this boy. To me, man, I was thinking that, man, getting married, man, that's, man, it's like, it's like, man, when people say your life flashed before your eyes when you get shot. You see a whole life. And I saw my life flash before my eyes, man. It was like, I was in a black space, man, and hoes was just flying by me, man. Vroom, vroom. It was just my life, though. But it was all in the form of some hoes, man. It was just vroom, vroom. I'm like, damn, I'm finna give all this shit up. The bottom line was, man, I love my girl, you know what I'm saying? I love my wife, man. Love her. I can hear him talking in the kitchen. I guess about maybe said 10 minutes. I heard the phone hit the floor. I didn't hear him say anything. In fact, it was a while, I guess, before I realized I heard a gun. My mom, she was up in the kitchen doing something, and she said she just heard a gunshot. So can't nobody really say why he did it, you know? It's just he gone, and ain't nobody gonna never find out the reason. Robert told me that he was tired of the gang banging. He said, Mama, I'm so tired of it. I don't know what to do. So it just doesn't make any sense. It's not a day that go by, man, that I don't think about my brother, man. I really, really, really miss my brother, man. And, you know, I still have thoughts like, what would he be right now? You know, what would he be doing right now, you know? See that mud drain all the way back up in there. Dude, I guess you could separate them and like stick them in. Do a little decorating here. Well, the man, you cleaned up now. You look like a superstar. You look like a superstar now. He gone, I hate it. I hate it dearly. And there's times I done had thoughts of suicide. I mean, I done stuck a pistol in my mouth plenty of times. I thought about what my little brother was saying at the time. Damn, why is this shit happening? You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing good coming out of life. We just steady living corrupted, fucked up. So I was like, shit, ain't no use of me being here, you know? So, shit. And I go get a pistol, goddamn it. It ain't got to be a revolver. 
It can be an automatic or a 12 gauge or whatever. I'll stick the motherfucker in my mouth and so I just damn near cry all my goddamn tears out. And when my tears gone, hell, I think about it, shit. I ain't ready to leave yet. You know, there's something here for me. I'm here for a reason. And shit, till I find what that reason is, I'm going to be here. I done now lived the bad life. I want to see the good life now. That's why I made up my mind, you know, fuck the gang shit and fuck killing all of other people, whether they black, white, Mexican, Chinese, or whatever, you know. Fuck it, let's all live together trying to accomplish something. That's what I want to do. Peace, homie. See you soon. to really idolize my brother. Man, back in the days, the whip was my idea of what a gangster was supposed to be. And uh, to see how things have took a toll on him, the drugs, it hurts me. So I feel like I've kind of lost a brother. The whip, the whip, the whip Jackson, Lethal's brother. Imagine that. The Whit Jackson. Fine piece of American manufacturing. Uh, we were responding down here to numerous uh, complaints of narcotics and gang activity. The van rolled up and made contact with a vehicle and uh, another, uh, another couple subjects. Uh, one of the subjects had this down in his waistband. It was fully loaded. And uh, once we made contact with him, got the weapon off of him and placed him into custody, uh, found out that he does have an active warrant out for his arrest. And so he's going to hopefully have a room at the end tonight. And we won't have to worry about him using this on somebody. D would know better. But also, D was the type of person that uh, he'd take his. You know, you get caught with, with the 45 and jump out boys jumped out on them. They doing their job. D would type person, he'll take his, he'll go on down and do the court thing, whatever. If he had to go back to jail, do his time, he will. My feelings towards him, I love him. This is my brother. Look, look, that's my homeboy, nigga. Crip. This the homies in the county. You still hit you up for the block, baby, all day. You hear me? Off the top, cousin. So where do you see yourself in the next six months? You know what? I already know what I got coming. Call the police on me here. Yeah, they are already looking for me. All right. They can't do nothing but try to catch me. And I'm like the gingerbread man, baby. I'm going to run fast as I can. You hear me? Shit, I know what I got to go do, boy, and I know if a motherfucker try to fuck with me and make me go there, I'm gonna fuck their ass up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's right. Moran, I think that he's really wanting to really accomplish something different in life, but I don't think that he know how. I think that all he know is the streets, the hood. And that's all a person know. When the least amount of pressure comes, he gonna go back to what he know. When I close my eyes, man, this shit don't go away. Banging ain't gonna never stop, man. This shit will never cease, man. It's a way of life around this motherfucker. And then when I die, it's gonna be another motherfucker just like me.
This is a stack of photographs that I have maintained of uh, a lot of our gang members that have been homicide victims over the last several years. Um, we take pictures of these guys when we arrest them, and uh, when I find out that they've been killed, I pull the picture. And as you can see, we've got quite a stack. I was with this guy when he died. He took about three real long, deep breaths and uh, didn't even make it to the hospital. Uh, he was killed this last weekend. He was shot, uh, let's see, probably about eight blocks over that direction. He was killed uh, in a drive-by shooting. There's just so many of them, it's hard to keep up, just on and on. Yesterday we were thugging and hustling. Yesterday we were holding it down in the hood. And yesterday we were rolling on dubs, flossing in clubs. We had things locked down in the hood. Yesterday is gone. Debo is one of the little homies, you know. And it was tragic because it didn't really even have to happen. When they heard that Debo had got killed, they wanted to go do something. But the reason there wasn't a retaliation was because Debo's brother who everybody think is so hot-headed, was very mature, he's matured over his time to the point to where I was able to talk to him and he was like, well, I need to, I think this was a message saying that I need to pay attention. <laughs> Folks and vice boys cried at this kid's funeral. Times has changed, but it's not the gang wars of old. Now, family members and people who was divided back then now have come back intertwined. So it's not a blood and a crip thing. It was somebody that killed somebody that a lot of people loved. I really feel like, in a way, so many deaths that came on our family that my day is stepping in somewhere soon. 
And me and my girl, we talk about it a lot at night, which she don't like talking about death. But I, that's the thing I love talking about is death, because I want to be prepared for mine. That's why every day I try to live and walk on the flat street and, you know, keep my head mellow or whatever. So when mine's come, I know I was prepared for it. Because I know it's stuff I done did in my past that numbered my days. But, you know, like if it hit me today, I'm ready for it. I don't know what God plan is for me, but I tell y'all top, I've been blessed. Cause hey man, I done made it, man. My birthday last month turned 30 years old. Hey man, and I can name right now about 15 homeboys that didn't even get past 22. But you know what the sad part is? Where you lose so many homeboys that it don't even affect you no more. Man, I can't even cry tears no more, man. I don't think that everything that's been happening in this community and the communities across this country has been coincidence. There's been so much violence going on. You know, it come a time when even the seasons of us say, man, when is it gonna stop? When will it ever be just over? When will it ever be over? Slow down. 